Hi, welcome to Lords of Indices Instruction Part 2. This build on the stuff we covered in Part 1 and think you through some of the basic Lords of Indices. Uh, from Part 1 we saw these two basic rules that when you multiply you just need to add the powers so this will be x to 12 and when you divide subtract the powers. Remember that if you see no power it means that the power is 1. So this would equal y to the power of 13. Today we're looking at problems of this ilk. So the new thing is we now have numbers in front of our letters with powers. Uh, let's approach it the same way. So last time I had these both color coded and I basically expanded out what everything, everything meant. So 4x squared means 4 times x squared and x squared is x times x. This is multiplied by 5x cubed so that's 5 times and then we're going to have 3 x's because it's x cubed. This looks a bit messy. What we can do there in maths is we can always rearrange our time signs. We can put them in a different order. So let's do that. I'm going to keep all my numbers at my front. So I've got 4 times 5. And then all my letters I'm going to put at the end. So you can kind of see here all I've really done is move the 5 to the front. And now we can start simplifying, simplifying things down. We have 4 times 5. That is simply just 20. And over here, we have 5x's times together, and that is simply x to the power of 5. And that's the answer. Okay. And again, same with here, it's more just the sound of this, it's also can you spot the pattern? Can you spot the underlying rule that makes these questions really easy? So let's try that again. So in this question, uh, let's try the same way. We've got 5a to the 4 times 2a to the 5. I'm not going to write all these out because I think it kind of makes it too easy almost and doesn't really have to sort of learn the general rule. We can recall this basically meant 5 times a to the 4 times 2 times a to the 5. And last time to get the final answer we had all our numbers at the front and all the letters at the end. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to move this 2 to the front so we've got 5 times 2 and then we're going to have all our letters at the back. So we've got a to the 4 and we've got a to the 5. Now we can do the exact same thing. 5 times 2 gives us 10. a to the 4 times a to the 5. Well here we want to add the powers and 4 plus 5 is 9. So it would be 10 a to the 9 or 10 times a to the 9 redundantly. And that's it. And that takes us to, the, to our main rule for multiplying. Which is you want to multiply the numbers and then add the powers. So for this question, you would do 2 times 6, which gives you 12, and then add the powers, 7 plus 2 is 9. So it would be 12a to the 9. Or redundantly, 12 times a to the 9, but you really don't need that time sign. And for the most part, that is all you need to do in these questions. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, if there's only one number, that's absolutely fine. So here, you would just have 9, and then add these two powers, b to the 7. Okay. Moving on, we can do the exact same type of question looking at division. Uh, so we saw last time that we can write division as a fraction. So we can write this as 6a to the 10 over 2a to the 4. Okay, and that's how we solved it. Um, I could do the same thing. I could write all these out and do the cancel out thing, but I'm not going to. I'm going to think, can we see a bit quicker what our pattern would be? Okay, we're going to try and do the same trick. We're basically going to separate our numbers from our letters. So if we just look at the number parts, that basically tells us we have 6 divided by 2. Okay, that's easy. So that's going to be 3. And if we look at our letter parts, we have a to the 10 divided by a to the 4. And again, from part 1, when we divide, we need to subtract the powers. So therefore, a to the 10 divided by a to the 4 would be a to the 6 because 10 minus 4 is 6. Let's see that idea again. So again, similar to what we did with multiplying, we're basically separating out our numbers from our powers. So 12 divided by 3, that's going to give us 4. We then want to divide our powers, and if we notice, we've got no power here. And as always, if there's no power, that means the power is 1. So we then subtract the powers, 4 take away 1 is 3, so we have 4g to the 3. So from that, you can see the key rule for division. 
you want to divide the numbers and then subtract the powers. So 40 divided by 4 would give us 10, 7 take away 3 would give us 4, so it would be 10x to the power of 4. Again, seeing that again, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 7 minus 3 is 4, so it would be 3a to the 4. Last example, again, if you've got no numbers, that's absolutely fine. Basically, whenever you don't see a number, basically that number's 1. So here you're doing 5 divided by 1, which is 5. 4 take away 2 gives you 5. C to the power of 2 or C squared. So again, if you ever want a number but you don't have one, it just means that number is 1. That's kind of the key rule in all algebra, which comes really strongly here. Okay, and that's it. I have some questions to try. I'll put those in the description. Give them a go, and I hope that made sense.